For my battery build, I decided to 3D print my cell holders. Uh, there are many pros and cons to this approach, but it ended up working out very well for me, so let me show you how I approached it. So first I started with a simple feasibility test. Can my printer even print at the 10 by 14 size that I needed? Turns out it definitely can, and with room to spare, which is good because the spacing was too tight. Since measuring led me astray initially, I decided an empirical approach to sizing the holes was better. I printed a test with 10 different sized holes. 18.6 millimeters seemed to be the sweet spot. Printing at these dimensions was better in this 2x2 two two test. I also determined here that the middle hole can be a cutout and it's still plenty strong. I also wanted to see how a cutout on the outside might work. That was fine as well. The zip tie was an idea for holding the pack together cheaply. It worked surprisingly well, but in the end I decided on something a bit more robust. I will mention one more detailed 4x4 test I did that was a total flop, uh, but I just was testing the limits of the 3D printer to see what features I could get in easily. Uh, here you can see some holders over the top of the wires, there's some nubs for routing wires, uh, there's a terminal mounting point, uh, a lip for the cover to sit into, and dedicated cutouts for those zip ties. With some minor tweaks, all of this would have been fine, it was only the bridging that didn't work out, and that could probably have been solved by supports. However, this approach just seemed too gimmicky to me. Trying to return to the basics, I went back to some of the initial attempts. This 3x4 test with a terminal mount seemed promising, if a little flimsy. I decided to stop being cheap with filament and bulk it up. At the same time, I added a couple of nut holes for the pack binding, since that worked quite well for the terminal. This was a bit weak, and you can see I snapped one cell's wall just mildly flexing it, but I decided to continue and make a full connected prototype. At this point, I felt like I was really getting somewhere. I hopped back into modeling and created a full 10 by 14 version of this design. The print came out really well, but took a whopping 19 hours. And even though I might could spare the two months it would take to print these, I don't like running my 3D printer while asleep, and I'm not awake for 19 hours a day. After a bit of research, I found the obvious solution. Just get a bigger nozzle. The CR10 can run larger nozzles okay, and after $10 and two days worth of prime shipping, I had a one millimeter nozzle mounted and printing. A good friend helped me tune my slicer settings and after a couple of test cubes, I was confident enough to try some new designs. The key to the success of this would end up being very simple printing geometry. And to that end, the space between these cells is exactly one wall thick. And it's a spline line with offset cells to avoid having to hold each cell individually. The pack would just compress and hold itself together. The first print with circular cell openings revealed a nasty issue. The one millimeter nozzle was not doing a great job with tight spaces. A test of only strips on the base looked great and printed really well, but unfortunately was felt too flimsy and that was only three cells across. I was confident enough at this point to just go for a full scale print. Plus I was eager to see what the print time would be. I wasn't paying attention to my filament on the first print and ran out twice, but it was enough for a test. I swapped to a different filament for another print for the opposite side and it got through fully. Four hours. Awesome. What a relief. The new print does use 40% more filament, but it feels about three times as strong, so I'll take that trade off. You can also see I added a mid-rib for strength. Turns out that's a great place to run a bus bar too. One problem here was that all these cells felt so loose. They're all shaking, even with bolts. And when I started diagnosing in Fusion 360, I noticed my math was off by a millimeter. I fixed that, but I couldn't even get the cells to fit then. And so I put the calipers on the wall and turns out the single wall dividers are printing much wider than I thought. So I added in a fudge factor to uh, compensate for that and I got a successful print. Everything is fitting tight. It even holds without any bolts. Perfect. At this point, I do want to point out one downside of my design. If you want to remove a single cell and replace it, it's going to be a huge chore. Those modular cell holders are easy to break the tabs off of and to pull a single cell out. For my particular situation, I'm not terribly concerned with that, so I accepted it. I swapped over to the final colors of red and black, um, and that's for polarity visibility, so you can see it at a distance. And the pack looks great. Uh, the bolts were concerning me a little bit, since it would be very easy to short them out. Um, I did a test print of these standoff insulators, and I think that's the solution there. I'm going to wait until the end of the pack assembly to print these, because I want to make sure they're taller than the wiring in the bus bars. Overall, for my project, I definitely think 3D printing was worth it. 
Definitely not for everyone, but it just so happened to work out well. Um, I like that I get some extra features. For instance, these standoffs uh, that are easy to attach uh, and the polarity indication with the two colors. I really think this is something that would be great for the uh, modular cell holders to add a second color so that you could indicate your polarity on the batteries. Um, another thing is that it actually ended up being cheaper. So this was around $150 uh, for me to 3D print in filament and buying the cell holders for a pack my size would cost maybe $300 or a bit more. So um, this ended out very well for me and I'm super happy with the results.